Do you want to beat the new endgame boss in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink and start farming out those juicy new powerful sigils? Well, here is a guide on how to beat him as well as some tips that we've learnt after completing this multiple times with randoms in the party. While the fight might seem difficult to begin with, knowing certain tips makes it so much easier. So let's go through some of the most important moves and tips to hopefully help you guys out. Tell us in the comments if you've beaten it yet and if you have any techniques that you don't think other people are aware of. When the fight begins, Lucilius will start off with the Paradise Lost phase and this is a staple move that can easily catch you off guard. One of the biggest mechanics you will need to overcome during the course of the entire fight is to minimize the number of times that he casts this to minimize how many times people will go down in your party if they end up getting hit. However, you have no choice but to survive the first one because this is how the fight opens. What you want to do is simply just avoid the AoEs on the floor. This includes circles and lines, so guarding and dodging is going to be very helpful here. One of the better ways to avoid these purple AoEs is by staying on the move. It's good to know you can do a perfect dodge on these circle ground AoEs, but one thing that will catch you off guard is the long purple beam AoEs that generally seem to come out of nowhere. To avoid them hitting you, you need to look out for very subtle purple line flashes on the floor that indicate a beam is about to come that way. These beams generally cover a huge line across the stage, so you will need to be moving, guarding, and perfect dodging to avoid them. An alternative method to make your life way easier in this fight is to bring a vein in your party, because they can do their invincibility bubble and basically skip this entire phase. After doing Paradise Lost, Lucilius will then go into his normal attack moveset, and this is where you can start doing some damage, and you will need to look out for some of his more notable moves during this phase. At various points, he will summon these purple orbs from the sky. The easiest thing to do is to block these or perfect dodge them, and you can know when this phase is coming based on the purple summoning circle when he's about to do it. If you get hit by these, they will apply a skill seal debuff, which can impact the rest of the fight and stop you using your moves. Another attack Lucilius can do that will catch many people off guard is his red AoE slashes, and there's two versions of this, but commonly he seems to do one and then another shortly afterwards. Getting hit by either of these will delete your health bar and basically one-shot you in most cases, so it is best to avoid these moves and learn them. They can be hard to react to, but something to look out for is that when Lucidius starts to spin around and push everyone away with wind, you actually want to get as close as possible to him because the safe zone of this move is basically all around him in a small circle. But do note he can follow up with the second red attack which is a massive AoE all around him, so for that one you want to run away or perfect dodge it. He also has a series of slashes that aren't too bad to deal with, but sometimes he will lock onto a single person in the party and focus on them with a red line, launching his massive swords and an orb at you and these will one shot you so you need to dodge these. It's good to note that during the first part of the fight you should be able to build up a link attack on him that will leave him vulnerable for a short period of time so you should aim to do that link attack. After you do enough damage and his health will generally be around 85% at this point, he will then perform the move 7 trumpets and this is a series of trials that you will have to work through with your party to overcome and then free Sandolphin. The first trial is perhaps the most confusing for new players seeing it for the first time because there will be a lot of different coloured circles on the floor all moving, but it's actually super easy. All you need to do is pick a colour and stand on it, and then all the other colours will lock off to purple, and everyone needs to run over the circles remaining of the colour you originally stood on. You then repeat this for every single colour until all 16 circles are gone. Just be careful to avoid the other circles and AoEs that come in from the edges as you do this, so you want to be perfect dodging or jumping over these AoEs while you work with your team to tick off each colour one at a time. The next trial has a similar theme, but in this one, you need to hit one of the big coloured orbs in the middle of the arena, and this will cause it to spawn four smaller orbs all around the area that you and your party need to defeat. You repeat this process of hitting a big orb, destroying the smaller ones of that colour, until all four orbs have been destroyed. During this whole phase, there will be laser beams in lines all around the area. You can jump over these or just block them to make this whole phase pretty easy. The final trial will then have you defeating three swords that are summoned by Lucilla. Each sword will have a different attack pattern, and we like to normally target the Sword of Repudiation first, as this one does massive AoEs if left unchecked. If you don't complete any of these trials properly, Lucilius will do an attack that will debuff the whole party, lowering your maximum HP for the rest of the fight, which makes it much harder and makes many of his attacks one-shot you. 
After you complete the 12 labors in this trial, Lucidius will then start to cast Paradise Lost once again. And this is definitely something you want to avoid. The only way to avoid this is to do a full chain burst with everyone in your party that will then free Sandolphin from his prison, allowing him to join you for an overburst SBA that will do massive damage and stop this attack. If you don't have enough SBAs for this part of the fight, then we recommend changing your build to include Uplift, as this will increase how fast you gain your SBA. After this, until he's around 58% health, you want to focus on dealing damage to him and breaking him, and he will try to cast Paradise Lost again in the center of the stage, and you will want to stop him from doing this. If you manage to burn him down to 50% health, he will then activate his next phase, which is Celestial Fusion, which will put him in a powered up form, and introduce a new element to the fight called the Final Rebellion. Rebellion. This is another phase you have to learn and it looks crazy to begin with but it's actually super easy once you get the hang of it. He's going to summon circles on you so everyone in your party needs to run around away from each other in order to place these circles on the floor and they will leave behind a slow bubble on the floor that will debuff you so you want to avoid touching any of the purple. Towards the end of this phase there will start to be lasers and AoEs and the best thing you can do here is dodge into the lasers or the AoEs to give you some invulnerability and breathing room. The last thing in this phase is a a massive orb that will be summoned and then dropped onto the center of the stage. What you want to do is stand on the edge of the arena and jump after the impact so you don't get hit by the energy wave that is released from it. It looks pretty crazy but it's super easy to avoid. Then after this you're back into his normal attack phase where you just need to DPS and survive until he casts the final rebellion which is the same phase as before. Once he gets to very low health around 15% he will start to do the gopher wood arc. In this new phase, he will start to beam across the stage, leaving lines indicating where he's going to attack. If you played the end game, you should know how to deal with this move as it does this same one. Just make sure to avoid the lines and block if you really need to. And then finally, Lucilius has one more trick up his sleeve. It's the end, which is another damage check that you must complete. But this time you need to look out for all of the ground AoE attacks around him that his swords will be doing to you. During this phase, you simply have to burst him down while surviving in order to win. So this is pretty much everything you need to know in terms of how to do the fight and what to expect. If you want to make it much easier, easier for yourself, then we highly recommend going in with a vein in your party, as this allows you to skip the final rebellion and paradise lost phases because you can just stand in the invincibility bubble. We also found that Yadara's mirror image ability was extremely good for the normal attack phases as they allow you to face tank many of his moves. So any characters that can tank for other party members, shout out to Vasaraga or Vayne, are going to be very good for this fight. And if you're playing a character with a very slow SBA, you might want to slot in those skills that increase the charge speed because because you need to get that full chain burst. Share any tips you've learned to take on Lucilius down below in the comments so we can all learn together as a community and subscribe for more Grand Blue Fantasy Relink.